And now we are recording. Hi, everyone. This is David P. France, and I'm coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. Uh, before we start this interview, I want to thank everybody who's been, um, you know, people have been supporting the channel. Uh, we'd like you to like the channel or like the videos, subscribe to the YouTube or BitChute channels, and, and really share it amongst your uh, friends, your colleagues, your family, and let them know what we're up to, which is we interview mainly uh, creators and creative people, right? I mean, um, that is the inspiration for the channel. We have dialogue, we talk about current events sometimes and people's careers and how they got started, et cetera, et cetera. So today I'm talking to a good friend of mine who she's agreed to speak to us again for the third time from New York City, Valerie Barnes. Hi, Valerie. My fall present to you, David. <laughs> <laughs> you made it through well, August. That's I made it through know. August. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> Va Valerie has her own video and film business. Can I call it that, right? Valerie yeah, Barnes. Yeah, you can call it that, sure. Well, you, is, is it videography you've, you've, you've uh, advanced more so to, how do you call it? Well, uh, it's the... Uh, it's an interesting definition, you know, um, because of the way the cameras are done nowadays, where you can shoot, mm -hmm. you know, in more of a film frame rate, you know, a 24 film frame rate. Woo, I can't even say that. Uh -huh. um, you know, before video is, is a very harsh look. Right. And, um, you know, shooting it with this kind of, you know, 24 frame rate gives it a little softer look, a little cinematic a little more, but it's not what, film, you know. What is 24? It's the, uh, it's the amount of frames that um, are uh, being okay. shot in a second. In a second. How, so it's 24. Uh, 24 how do you, and in 24 Europe, frames. actually, it's 25. And Europe is 25. Yes, yeah, 25. Now, before, before we go, I'm going to ask you questions because there's so many things. We haven't spoken for a while. And of course, yes, we made it through the summer. As many of you guys don't know, um, I generally do not like August. No, you generally um, hate August. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it's everybody have to, to go away? Why does everybody yeah. goes away? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm used to working, right? So when everybody goes on vacation, it literally right. drives me crazy because I can't get anything done. No one's returning emails. People are chilling, you know, and, you know, August. I understand people want their vacation and, and, and in particular with regard to COVID and things that have been going on, you know, I, it's even more important now that people have time to, for themselves. Yeah, but they've had a lot of time. They've had a lot yeah. of time, but I mean, it's, it's still problematic because, you know, business does drive, I mean, wow. everything <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yeah, but they but can not everybody business. is of that opinion, you see. But they're doing business on the beach in the Riviera. Okay, you know? fine. Okay, fine. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, we just I never was, made it there. That's all. Well, you know what? I've already <laughs> planned. I've decided to plan my vacation for 2021 now. So I'm already planning for next July and August now, which oh, is a rare thing. Okay. The rare thing. You know I don't do you that. You in. You gave in. I wouldn't say gave in. I just like the fact that I can plan an event and, and, and I, I will treat the vacation like an event. Every time yeah. August, you know, comes around like July 31st, I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> I know who's not very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, people like, you know, act like you it's where you live, David, you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> well, anyway. So when's the last time, when's the last time we spoke? It was, it was really months ago, right? Yeah, I think so. Right. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I think it and was, um, was it before all of the, um, no, it was kind of around the time, I think, of George, George Floyd. It was right around that time. Yeah, we, right we touched a little bit about on that, and then right. it's just been getting a little more intense, you know. Right. And so what do you think, what do you think is happening now? I mean, um, with everything, I mean, I think New York, in New York City, uh, de Blasio pushed back school openings, and I heard that, you know, people weren't yeah. so happy about that, right? I think it's a little confusing. You know, everybody's doing their own thing. Um, mm -hmm. Friends of mine, they were telling me that their daughter is going to be um, doing school remotely. Mm 
-hmm. So, and then I think they're going to wait to see how that goes. And then it's going to be three days a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then you talk to somebody else and it's something a little bit more different. So I don't really know how that, how that works. It seems a little confusing. I know the teachers are concerned and I would be too, if I was a teacher, um, for sure, you know, um, but I'm not really, I really don't know um, if there's a kind of a unified message on mm -hmm. this, you know? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then there's colleges, you know, some colleges are open and, and people are going to college, some are doing it remotely, from what I understand. Right. It's a new game, you know? It it's is, a new game. It? It's a new game. It's a game that, that people hadn't really thought about playing and now they were forced into it. So I don't know, it's kind of crazy. See, it doesn't change for me because I always work at home, Right. you know? So, so my life is basically the same, you know, but for a lot of people it's, it's been a challenge, you know, with the adjustments to make. And you've, you've had some gigs, I think I saw on social yeah, media. Yeah, uh, but they were out of state, actually. Mm -hmm. I had one in West Virginia um, you know, because their restrictions are much different than New York or any place mm -hmm. else. Matter of fact, I don't even know if West Virginia has any except for wearing masks. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then in New Jersey, um, which seemed to change their restrictions as the, um, the weeks went by in terms of how many people you were allowed to have in an event. It went like from 350 to 200, and then after some people abused it, mm -hmm. <laughs> it went down to like 100 mm -hmm. from, you know, the, the wedding that I shot out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were people abusing. It was great. There was this one, these two, I guess, the owner of this mansion, I mean, this place was a mansion, right? Goes and rents out the mat mansion to this other person mm -hmm. or people, I'm not sure, to have this party. And they invite 200 people to go come to this party. 700 people show up, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. it's, it's kind of on this private street, you know, a lot of really wealthy homes. So neighbors started complaining. Right. The cops had to come out there. It yeah. took them five hours to disperse all of this. They, you know, the, the owner of the house got in trouble. The, the person that was throwing the party got in trouble. I think they got fined really heavily. I'm not really uh -huh. sure what else happened, you know. So, yeah. I mean, you know, these kind of abuses. There was abuse in New York where they rented a boat to go out. And there were a few hundred people on the boat and they got busted. I mean, people just, they can't, they just they can't. can't. Help it. They can't help it. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's mm -hmm. been pretty interesting, you know. But I mean, part of, I mean, the restaurants started opening, you know, they were doing the outdoor service. Right. I kind of like. You know, um, it's it's kind of uh, nice to be able to sit outdoors, and they've blocked off certain streets uh -huh. um, because of that. And mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's still you know an issue uh, with trash all over the place, and you know, really, you know, yeah, it was like they've cut down on the on the, the sanitation department and you know cleaning the streets and stuff like that because of the budgets. You know, there's a whole bunch of problems with a lot of. Um, People that were living in shelters, whether uh -huh. they be, you know, um, homeless or people that have addiction habits, you know, mm -hmm. or mentally disturbed people, they're they're all out there now in the streets. Right. You know, they were putting them up on the Upper West Side in hotels. The city. I heard about that. that. Mm -hmm. Which wasn't really something that the Upper West Side was happy about. And then, you know, Adrian, I was talking to her, our mutual friend, and she's on the Upper East Side, and she was telling me about her experiences with that and them setting up camp. It's, um, it kind of reminds me of the 80s. Of the 80s, right? Yes. A bit, right. Yeah, except in the 80s in the East Village, you know, there were a lot of burned out buildings or mm -hmm, vacant mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. you know, the backdrop is all of these multi-million dollar co-ops and all these right. buildings with doormen and stuff like that. So it's a weird juxtaposition. Are you saying um, that you're saying now it's it's the high level stuff? Yeah, it's like that these was, really yeah. expensive buildings and then you you look down below and you've got all these people living on the street, you oh, know. I see. I see. I yeah. See. Yeah, it's, it's a weird juxtaposition of that. Um, 
I you know, keep thinking that something creative is going to be coming from this. I, I think it, it already is. Look, I'm doing, yeah. you, Valerie, you know I'm doing my part, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm, doing it. I, I'm doing it if I have to drag the people, right? <laughs> I have to drag them. And look, now is the time, right? Don't, what are you waiting for? It's now, right? And um, I mean, like, let's just say, I, you know, I don't want to go, I'm not going to specifically name this band or group, but you know, now it's everybody, there's a, it's a free for all. So if you're an artist, you really have to, you know, make sure that you're on social media, that you're really taking this thing seriously. And, and, and to her credit, let's just talk about Mariah Carey briefly. All she right. put out a book. I think I've been seeing videos pop up. Um, yeah. I don't even know if she's with a label anymore. Like I assume that she is, you know, but it looks like she's driving a lot of the stuff. Right, and I think during uh, a, a situation like um, COVID, or you know what's happening now, now is the time for artists and creative people, right? And 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 now is the time to strike because people really are in need of inspiration in so many ways, right? And yeah, so, New, York, New York Magazine put her on the cover. I yeah. have I have the uh, the issue. I just haven't read it yet. You know, so yeah. she's making some kind of play. Is it, is it a great picture? Is it a great picture? Uh, on the cover, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, you know. I'll have, I'll it's fine. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to kind of see. I was talking with um, this woman that I've done some work with before, and she is a photographer, mm -hmm. and, um, and her husband owns an art gallery. Right. a well-known art gallery in the city. And, well, actually around the world, I suppose. But, um, you know, I said to her, I said, I, I feel that there's like going to be this, this kind of burst of creative energy and spirit, you know, that comes out because of all of this stuff that, that's going on and all of the things we've been kind of forced to do and very limited, you know, in what we can do, especially in the, in the creative field, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and she seems to think that too. The only thing that I hope is that not everything becomes COVID driven. What do you mean like uh, COVID driven? Like all of the grants that will be available. Uh, okay, okay. All of, the, all of the subject matter, you know, uh, for artists where it, it becomes um, just about that. Uh, it's so much more. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's a boring topic, but it's, it's rather, it's a rather bland, it's, it's not something like, it's, 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 in my opinion, too general. It's too general. It is, it, usually when you, when you present art, in my opinion, there has to be a point of view which is so specific, if it's gonna be good, if it's gonna be great, Right, it, it has to be so specific. It cannot be, you know, like oh, COVID. I mean, it, it can't. It, it, you know, everybody's going through it. You know what I mean? Everyone's going through COVID. So it's not that, like, let's say, for example, what made the '80s in New York City great is that that being in the city was a specific thing that no one else in the world had access to but the people in New York City. True. Right? No one. So like everybody that was there in the 80s has a frame of reference. And all of these things came out of that experience, which makes it what makes it very difficult now is that people can just be on Instagram, and just, <laughs> you know, and be expressing themselves that way or TikTok. Um, it, there's oh, yeah. not this sort of COVID isn't forcing a, forcing the artists to work in the way that is going to yield um, the kind of result that happened in the '80s. Right? It's going to be different. It might be just as big, but you know, you had to be in New York if you're a creative person. You had to be there. 
Well, this is something, this is something that is worldwide, you know? I mean, New York was a little bit of a different thing in the 80s. I mean, people came here because it had this energy about it, you know? Right. And, and there were a lot of elements to New York that inspired artists, you know? Right. And then, of course, you had, you know, things happening um, with AIDS as well, you know, that kind of came into play. But, um, but this is, you know, worldwide. You know, this isn't just about New York. Um, this is everywhere, you know, and across the United States. I mean, you could see how things have been handled here, you know, and the dynamic and the division that's, that it's created because of the way a lot of things have been handled and a lot of li a loss of life and, uh, you know, just a lot of things that make this something where, you know, it's a shared experience in a very different way. Yeah. You know, we're all sharing this experience, um, you know, and, and it's different levels. Some of us have gotten it. Some of us haven't. Some of us have known people that had it. Some people have lost their lives, you know, with it. I mean, there's just all these different things. Some people wear masks. Some people don't wear masks. You know, all of these protests, you know, have um, also come as a result of this, which I think is actually a good thing, you know, in a way, um, trying to take some of the positive out of it. I don't really think that the protests would be as effective if everybody would have been at their jobs, you know, right? So it's, it's kind of caused a unification. It created a unification mm -hmm. with, you know, these protest movements, mm -hmm. um, which I personally am glad, you know, um, but that's just my opinion. You know, I think it, I think it's, been necessary for a long time and we've had we've had pockets of it you know when i've been able to go to them there have been pockets of these gatherings but this has been this like went on for like six weeks i think mm -hmm. you know and and you know the recent um again you know shooting uh in wisconsin of of the african-american man in the back you know because yeah. i mean Oh, yeah. Valerie, Valerie, do you remember, do you remember now, right before, right before I sold my apartment, which was like, what, 2019, in New York City, I remember when I would go visit Harlem, Central Harlem, I started to see younger cops, right? So, so in other words, there's a new generation that's coming through. The new generation is very, very different than the you know the old guard the people that are, have those jobs it's also the same in switzerland when you are a train conductor on the swiss train generally you are old older white guy or maybe you know you would see an italian or italian swiss um occasionally you would see an indian because a lot of indians have immigrated to switzerland and now you're starting to see the young, the young, the young people come up, and it's a whole different thing. Like, you know, they're different. Generally, the um, the Swiss conductors or the trains would be rather tall. Now they're like, you know, they're women and they're different shapes and sizes, different attitudes. And when you come, you know, when they come through the, you know, the train, you're looking at them like, you know, like okay. And some of them are really, really nice and have a, you know, because every conductor has a style or has, there's sort of a way that you're supposed to, you know, speak to the, you know, customer and grab their ticket and say, et cetera, et cetera. And not all of the new people are doing that, right? <laughs> not all of them. So you can see there sort of, the, so in New York, I noticed when the young cops started coming and they would be around, you know, where we, where I live. And I was like, you know what? I got to be really careful with these young cops because they look like they'll pull a gun in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like itchy fingers, right? Yeah, because uh -huh. they, don't, they don't, they don't have the, you know, the, 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 the bandwidth, the, the mental bandwidth. And let's say the people that became cops came from a very specific milieu, if we want to call it, particularly the ones in New York. And I'm not saying that the younger cops are soft, but they have less experience, right? And so, you know, they, and even the way that the uniform would hang on them, 
Like, it's like, bitch, like, are you getting this fit? You know, like, it should be, it should fit you. It shouldn't be like you got a skinny head and a neck and then the hat is like all over, you know. <laughs> you mean like down your face? <laughs> yeah, you know, like sitting on you, like, you know. It's, it's very similar when I was trying to, you know, when I was a freshman and I was in the NROTC, the Naval ROTC, I looked so bad in that uniform because I looked <laughs> like I was 13. And those uniforms are for people that have a bit more, you know what I mean? My, like, you yeah. don't want to be a skinny twig. Like the firemen. Yeah, you need to be like that. You know, you need to kind of come, you know. Mm. That is why those types of people are genetically made. Those are the ones that are, should, should really be in those roles. Not some little guy. Right, that can barely like you know, his his clothes aren't fitting. So when I walked around Harlem, I was like, you know what, Dave, you just whenever you see them, just go the other way because who knows what will happen? Like when they're in a panic, right, right, sure, and they will pull a gun in a minute because they have no experience dealing with other people on a on a very street, you know, down to earth working class level. Well, one of the problems in New York specifically is that a lot of the cops, you know, they don't live in the city. They yeah. live out in Long Island. Long Island so yeah. it's a very different dy dynamic out there, you know, so they don't really understand urban youth, you know, and, um, and so, and also it kind of reminds me, you know, there's um, of coal miners, yeah. you know, coal, coal mining runs in families, generations of families. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard sometimes for these younger coal miners to let go of the idea that the industry is dying, mm -hmm. you know, like their great grandfather was a coal miner, their grandfather, their father, you know, their mm -hmm. uncle. I mean, it just went right down the line. And you'll find that with not all cops, but there, it is a family, mm -hmm. it's a family um, occupation in a way, you know, um, and so, uh, you know, so there's, there's a lot of issues and, and it all comes down to training and understanding, you know, and, and understanding the community that you're in, the community that you're protecting, you know. Um, and I think there's a difference um, in, in if they would do that. Like I was watching this program on Frontline uh, the, other, the other day. And it's kind of like a follow-up because this guy who is a reporter, he was focusing on um, Newark and mm -hmm. the policing in Newark and some of the stuff. And there was this, um, um, these cops that were part of the gang unit mm -hmm. and they would basically go to these different neighborhoods and, and they would, if they thought that somebody looked suspicious, you know, they would get out of the car and they would just go over and frisk him and check him out for no reason. Person wasn't doing anything, you know. And um, and so it was just, you know, it, it's called policing the police, you know. And so he did a follow up, and and there's um, there's a mayor in there now. Um, I guess he's been for a few years, you know. Um, I forget his name, but he's an African American um, mayor, and he's kind of brought a new way of policing and thinking about policing in the community. He got rid of the gang unit. He's like, no, because they used to get all kinds of complaints. And a lot of problems, you know, is that these cops will get a lot of complaints and they'll just move them to another place. They won't fire them. You know, right. they'll just move them. Right. You know, it's like the priest getting moved from one right. Catholic church to the next, you know, and they still do the same thing. So he's fired some. You know, he got rid of the gang unit because it, they, they basically were targeting people, right. you know. Um, and so it seems to be shifting. The mentality seems to be shifting out there in the way you police and how you police, mm. you know. Um, which could be something that could be, you know, done in a lot of places, you know. It's not an easy job, that's for sure, you know. No, I mean, no of course not. I mean, and, and cops, I mean, I can understand why they're fearful. You know, a few years ago, there was somebody that just walked up to a police car here in New York City, I think maybe in Queens, I'm not sure. They were having lunch, and they just blew the two cops away that were sitting in the car, right. you know. So I, I understand the fear, but you're the ones that should be trained. It's like the Army, you should be trained on well, how to handle things you know i could tell i could tell that these cops this was a couple years ago many years ago 
I was like, these guys are on train. I could tell just by the way they were walking in the street. Right? Like, if you're a cop, you shouldn't be slouching while you're walking. Your nope. clothes should fit. Right. <laughs> you know? Okay? Couture box. Skinny, 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 skinny. If you're uh -huh. a skinny cop, they should be pairing you with a very thick cop. There's no way that there should be three, three skinny cops walking in Harlem. Well, they shouldn't have guts, so they can run if they need to. Well, I'm not saying guts, but they need to be, they need to have some girth. They need to be in you know shape. I mean? they, they have to be, to be in shape. some shape, you know. But so. there's also, you know, this, this mentality, you know, trying to assert their authority and their power. I mean, I've had things happen to me, and I, look at me, I'm blonde like, and I'm white, like, you know. Like what, like, Valerie? What happened, what's happened to you? Um, well, I, I think I told you the time that I got pulled over by the cop for speeding up in, um, up in Massachusetts and I specifically, and the car that I drove had broken down uh -huh. on the way up there. And if the car went uh, over 55 miles an hour, uh -huh. the steering wheel would shake. Uh -huh. So there's no way that I'm, you know, speeding uh, <laughs> in Massachusetts. <laughs> and a, a friend of mine uh, was with me and she was a passenger and she had one of those Grace Joan haircuts, you know how uh -huh. Grace Jones used to have her hair? Right. And uh, all of a sudden they see this siren behind me. Uh -huh. And I'm like, is that, is that for me? <laughs> like, it can't be for me. You know, I'm not speeding. <laughs> and it was, you know. And he, he's a state trooper and he pulls uh -huh. us over, you know, and he has his hand on his holster. Oh, okay. You know, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, what's he going to do? Like, shoot us? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I, of course, in my, you know, little girl voice, I'm like, oh, is there a problem? You know, and he, he looked right past, you were speeding, he looked right past me and he looked at my, my friend, my African-American friend, mm -hmm. and he asked her for her ID. Really? Yes. And I, I looked at him and I said to him, I'm like, why are you asking her for her ID? You uh -huh. know, and she said to me, she goes, that's okay, Valerie, it happens all the time. You what? know, and yeah. I got a, like a two hundred fifty dollar ticket. I was really, I was really mad on all well, that. Why? Why didn't he? I mean, if it were, if if I had stopped you, and I had had, you know, of course I'd have training, right? I would not have asked that. That I would not have asked the passenger for her ID first. Well, we know I why. Would have, I would have asked for both, or I would have asked for yours first. Because I was driving, right? Because you were driving, right? Yeah, so right. if exactly. he says, okay, you were speeding, then, no, he, <laughs> then well, I'm just saying, then of course he's Get covered. Right. <laughs> he's covered, right? He's covered. So in other words, like when these, when they have to know, they don't know the law sometimes. They don't know, like, okay, if, 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 if Valerie they, is someone that care. is, he didn't oh, care. say what? He did not care. He did not care, but like, imagine you, you haul him into court for whatever reason. You you happen to be the granddaughter of the blah de blah de blah, blah corporation, and you're, you know, you're an artist, whatever it is. We know these stories because there are a lot of people like that in New York City. And um, yeah, you you don't, you, when you pull, when you stop somebody, you ask the, pass, the person that's driving. Yes, exactly. With their ID first, if anything. Exactly. Exactly. Not the one that's sitting in the car with the Grace Jones haircut. I mean, that, that's just a no-brainer. No, I know that. But mm -hmm. there was obvious motivation, a different motivation and intention oh, behind see. that whole thing, behind mm -hmm. him pulling me over for speeding. <laughs> we know. We know uh -huh. the story, you know, and I mean, you know, I've had different things, little things happen, you know, where, you know, cops are rude to me. You know, mm -hmm. I've had that happen to me. I'm like, I'm just asking you a question. When I when I went over, there's a precinct just a, a, a half a block from me, you mm -hmm. know, and I went over there because um, my license plate fell off. Like in New York, you have to have the plate on the front and the back. Right, I understand. You know, and it fell off the front, and I didn't I didn't know that. You know, and I had gone, I had actually driven to Cape Cod and come back, right? Uh -huh. And um, and I saw it, and I went over to the priest 
precinct. And of course, I, you know, still had my Pennsylvania license. I hadn't switched it yet and mm -hmm. didn't really know that I needed to. Yeah, yeah. And um, they were giving me a hard time about everything. And I was just asking questions. I'm like, you know, I have a place in Pennsylvania too. What am I supposed to do about this? We don't know. I'm like, what kind of attitude is this? You know, <laughs> I mean, what's the matter with you? It was, it's, it's just so I, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, these other experiences that are going on me. Mm -hmm. It's just on a basic level, you know, right. it's like nothing, but then being people that are being targeted for whatever reasons. I, I mean, no wonder why everybody's afraid. Jesus, you know, and other really people are upset. Yeah, well, you know, they have a right to be upset, yeah, you know, upset. And, and, and these and crazy things that happen. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it needs so, to be a reckoning, you know. Well, let me, let me ask you another question. What do you think about um, the sports, the sports teams or the sports um, are trying to, you know, start their season or whatever? Wasn't, who, who was the NBA or, or um, NFL? Somebody was taking the knee. They all took the knee together or something like that. Well, Wow, yeah, you know. And then people are booing. <laughs> they don't want the need. My question. This is my question. I can understand playing national anthems during the Olympics and stuff like that, but why are you playing it before a ball game? I just never understood that. Well, because it's because it's been a tradition. I know, but for as long as long as it's been, like you I know the game starts. Why? Because it's, you know, represents America and Americana, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's it, baseball is the apple pie and baseball, yeah. Chevrolet, whatever it was. Those are American pastimes. So, I mean, I, I, I'm okay with it. I just want... I don't think it needs to, I don't think it needs to be there for that. Well, well, I, I think this, I just think people need to treat one another with respect. That's the problem. But, yeah, exactly. That's the problem, right. because if, right. if, 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 if if that happened, then there wouldn't be this big brouhaha, right? Where people are Well, just like, I mean, you know, it, it started with Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think what happened to him is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no reason for that, you know? I mean, he's basically blacklisted from the NFL. I mean, you're right. ruining the career of what? Somebody who just took a knee? I mean, that's ridiculous, you know? Well, um, well. And, um, and so, you know, ever since the whole thing with George Floyd and, and the, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, certain athletes and organizations are embracing what Colin Kaepernick did actually a few years ago. I think it was mm -hmm. 2017 that he did that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I really feel, you know, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I, I really don't have a problem with it at all. Um, and I think, you know, sports figures are, are large figures, you know, they have a lot of influence in different ways, depending yes. on who's watching the sport. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these athletes, you know, are of color, you know, yes. baseball, you've got a lot of Dominican players, you know, you've got, you've got Cuban players, you've got Venezuelan players, you know, um, in football, you have a lot of African American players. And um, I don't blame them, you know? I mean, it's, it's kind of like time for, you know, the voice to be heard. And if they're influential and they're powerful and they're using that as their, as their, um, their tool to promote understanding and respect and, you know, equality, I don't see anything wrong with that mm -hmm. at all. But that's just my opinion, David. Well, yeah, yeah. Look, there are a lot of people that have various opinions it's not topic. harm i don't i don't understand there's no harm in it you know what i mean there's what is the harm behind it um it's not hurting anybody it's not it's not it's not spewing hatred mm -hmm. you know like some things do and some gatherings do um it's basically showing um support and unity i don't think that's a bad thing at all and look, they've done stuff other times using the platform, right? It's, it's it, the NFL and the NBA, they've used the platform to recognize other um, movements, other situations, other things that have happened, 
Sure. Right? Like, like, yeah, like a moment of silence and, you know, that whole thing, right? Yeah, I mean, 9-11, there was a whole thing yeah. on that. You know, um, I, I, I don't think it's harmful and I think it's about time. You know, uh, I think it's about time that these are issues are seriously addressed. Now, how long this is going to last for, you know, how effective it's going to be. It depends on the person, you know, um, but I, I just think it's it's about time, really. Yeah. Really. Well, we well, when we think about when I think about how you and I were working together years and years ago and how we would go knock on doors and we, we talked about this in a different video. But we were knocking on doors and the response, I mean, people were downright nasty, right? They were downright nasty. And I thought about all the things that have transpired since that time where I was in New York and doing, and I do, and I do think, think like it was a tough time. I mean, we made the best of it. I made the best of the situation, but when you see 20 years, 25 years later, the people that were literally helping one another out to get to the top, like, you know, uh, Roger Ailes and Geraldo Rivera and Charlie Rose, these are all media people for you guys. Um, you, you, you could see how, you could see how people were excluded or things, people were not allowed. If you were not a male, if you weren't white, and I would say um, mostly white, these guys were running it. They, but we didn't have any sort of evidence to show that that was the case, right? We, we did, you know, it was to be able to bring a, a discrimination lawsuit is a very, very difficult thing, right? It's very yeah. difficult to prove. But when right. people started getting knocked off in terms of, you know, being exposed, it was just interesting how all they were all these people that we knew about and read about in the news. It just it's just interesting to me, um, you know, that even during times like this and even in the past, before even we were born, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you had people that were fighting against this kind of injustice. Mm -hmm. um, I have been um, not sure if this what's going on with this project or where it is how it's happening or if it's happening. But um, even if it doesn't happen, um, I find it, it's interesting what I've learned. Um, there was this woman by the name of Sarah Little Turnbull. She was born in Brooklyn. I think she was like about, kind of like Ruth Ginsburg, you know, like five feet high <laughs> and born in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And um, she, you know, grew up and, you know, was working in the 50s and the 60s. She's an industrial designer. Mm -hmm. And she is the one that basically came up with the design for the N95 mask. Okay. And she worked with NASA. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she helped design, um, you know, the Corning um, uh, Corel cookware. Mm -hmm. You know, because her philosophy on design, she was a woman. She didn't get a lot of recognition. Maybe she did within certain circles, but yeah. nobody really heard of her, you know. And, um, you know, what she would do is she was a problem solver, you know. So she, being a woman, she would know what women needed, mm -hmm. you know, in the kitchen or what would work for them when they were the 50s housewives, you right. know. And she would set out and start figuring out what kind of material to make for this, you know, and she did a lot of different things. I even just found out that she's the one that put the color in Dawn, you know, the detergent, sure. that blue color yeah. that was her that, making. That was, that was innovative, right, at the time. Because yes, I yeah, and, and we all know that because of the color, right? You know, that blue color. And they put and, it in the um, commercial, and, and it's like, oh, this is blue, this is blue, this is blue. Don, it's Dawn, it's blue, it's Dawn. You, know? <laughs> you don't even need the label, that's Dawn. Uh -huh. You know, and, and so, you know, there are a lot of these women uh -huh. um, that have, were doing these things, you know, at a time when women weren't really allowed to. I see. You know, and it's just like the, the, the three women at Nassau. You know, the African-American women that were, you know, 
doing things and helping so, you know problem solve and stuff like that so there's always something rumbling under the surface you know it's just when is it going to be allowed to fully blossom like full garden nice. you know rather than just a little flower in this corner a little flower in that corner you know <laughs> well, did i tell, ever tell you that i met uh ruth bader ginsburg <gasps> oh you're so lucky I did. I, 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 I did, the story is this, right? So I, you know, this is, I had graduated already from Tulane Law School. I think I was in Europe and there was a fairly well-known professor there. I can't remember his name, but I think either his first name or last name was Valentine or Valentine. I have to get his, uh, go and do the research, but he had connections and knew all these people in Europe. And every year he would bring students over to Europe. In this particular time, he organized an event with Ruth Bader Ginsburg and, uh, you know, other prominent people, women. Um, one of, um, one of the other women, um, or is, or was, um, her daughter, who was a professor at Columbia, uh, Columbia Law School. Right. I went, you know, it's like at a certain point when I moved here, I would just do things on my own. I didn't necessarily need anybody else to come with me when I was doing these sort of exploratory things, whether it would be going to Paris or going to this place or whatever. I, I would go by myself. So I went by myself and I sat in the, uh, in some law school that was in France. And um, she she was like a dynamo. She was in the middle, of course, and her her, her daughter was you know to the to her left. And um, I don't remember that much about what they talked about. I just wanted to see what she looked like. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> I wanted to see what the big deal was. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to that, right? So when the invitation, when the email came, I was like, oh yeah, that's an excuse I can go to Paris. <laughs> and I get to see her because, you know, everybody's talking about her. So the justice um, of the Supreme Court and all you cared about is what, she looked, see what like. she looked like. <laughs> anyway, so oh. afterwards, right, everybody was in the, you know, the foyer and she was, you know, she's a very little lady, but she yeah. had a, I would say her she had a not a, it's not even a vibe she had a you know how like dogs growl <laughs> wait a minute like or a motor <laughs> like a motor runs you know how a motor runs and you can kind of hear it vibrate oh, what a... when i was when she was out there on her own i could feel her vibration i could literally feel her vibration and she had these white gloves on she had mm. gloves on yeah. and she had a purse or something right so it was even when she walked around, even though she was the littlest thing, she still had this sort of presence like, you know, right? So I think part of it was, I knew that she wasn't gonna be around that, you know, much longer. And I just wanted to see what the big deal was. I was like, I need to see this lady. That's it. I don't really even care about what she has to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you missed out. I just want to see her, right? Oh because she's iconic. <laughs> It, to me, it was like seeing Michael Jordan, right? Or seeing, oh. you know, uh, you know, if we saw Madonna, Beyonce, or something like that, she's in that stratosphere. So I said, okay, I'm going to see her. And then I, you know, <laughs> so I, I think I, someone introduced me to her. And she looked at me like, eh, you know, it was no big deal, right? But, but this was the interesting thing. The law professor's wife, there was a law professor's wife who I started having conversation with. And she and I connected. She's like, she understood why I was there. She understood like kind of what I was doing, which is what I do still now. Um, I told her I was, you know, in dance and the whole thing. And she, I think was also an artist. She had married her husband and he, you know, he was a law professor and she moved to New Orleans. So she and I were like this by the end of that event. And she was the one that said, did you meet David? And they looked at me. The dean, her, and, and and her husband were looking at me like, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of like the way you were to them. <laughs> what, to what? Oh my God. Yeah, but I was like, hey. In, in front I don't of care. greatness. Yeah, I was like, I don't care. I just want to see what you look like and You're what totally you do and how woman. you move. You are not a woman. <laughs> huh, what? 
You're totally not a woman. If you were, you would have had a very different understanding. What would I have understood? <laughs> Well, everything that she's done for like women's rights and stuff. Well, I know that. I know. I just knew that she did a lot, right? So, yeah, but you didn't I, care. I just. Well, I mean, I do care, right? Because I did show up, right? Oh. I did show up. Like I almost looked at it like, yes. like the same way that we went when we were trying to book Diane von Furstenberg, right? It was like, I don't care about all that other stuff. We just try to get you on TV, right? Like I know. Relate to that, you know. Say what? I can relate to that, you know, given different experiences that yeah. I've had. We've talked about like with Puffy and people yeah. like that. Where it's like, I don't care. I don't want to get a ticket. Take your <laughs> ticket. All right, right. Okay. Or, or <laughs> I was interested not just in her, but the the web of people around her, the network of people around her. So if by chance there was an opportunity where I had to get in touch with her. Or, you, you know what I mean? I was thinking like a booker. Are you talking about uh, Diane? Or I'm talking about Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg. I Ruth wanted to see who was responsible for bringing her there, who yeah. showed up, uh, you know, what she said. I mean, I don't remember exactly what, you know, it's not like it was etched in my brain you after the documentary. You know, but her daughter with the, I knew, more, look, I observed her daughter more so than I observed. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Wow. The daughter was more like still in the shadows yeah. of her mom. Well. And it was like she was cowering a bit on, on stage. And I was like, why are you cowering? Like, I mean, in my mind, I was like, oh, you know, like, it don't, I mean, your mom is, your mom is the shit, right? Okay, we all know, but you got to hold your own. Like, you cannot, you get what I'm saying? You, you've got, in front of a public, you've got to, Make sure that people know why you're there. Yeah. And not just, I'm the daughter of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and I went to Columbia High School or Columbia Law School. Uh, you know, and all I kept thinking was like nepotism, nepotism, <laughs> nepotism, you know, while the, the whole thing. So I was really going for the event of the, 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 the event of it because I responded to the event, mm. you know, as it was communicated. You're not going for the meat. Huh? You're not going for the meat of the event well everything everything oh, like okay. the venue <laughs> who was in the room uh-huh okay. which law students showed up and actually took the time out the ratio of men versus women yeah what was that ratio do you recall <sighs> it was i think it was balanced it was more there were a lot of younger people there and of course, there were a lot of men there because they're representing Tulane Law School and, you know, they had to be there. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't as if it was like an all woman thing. Mm -hmm. And um, what's interesting is that there will be another time where we're going to, I'll be able to, to go to an event like that for some other person. Right. I mean, back to Diane von Furstenberg, someone sent me an email about what's happening with her business and apparently oh, really she's lost a lot of money and I about that. say what i wondered about that because you know um a friend of mine went over to the to the meat packing district and a lot of those stores you know some of them have gone out of business and i right. asked um i asked janine about it i'm like hey you know is dvf is that still closed you know because some of the stores are reopening and they you know provided for certain restrictions and she said, no, her store isn't open. She goes, but she owns the building, which I had forgotten about, you know. The um, open because of COVID, right? Right, correct. But a lot of stores are reopening, actually, you know, right. but there's just a lot of restrictions, but some have chosen to stay closed. But she doesn't have to worry, I guess, because she owns the building. She's not, I, I guess, um, was she building her building where you were, when you were still living here? Because yeah. remember when we went to the right. event? And it was on like, I think 11th street or something in yeah. the West village. Right. That was, that was the old building. Now there's a guy and his wife, I think she is now the, the head uh, of Columbia university uh, school of architecture guy. Huh. I know went to Penn with me um, and his yeah. wife were the architects for that building. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was in that building one time cause I shot a wedding of one of the women that worked for her. 
you know, yeah. I, I can't remember the title, you know, so right. I, I went in the, I almost fell down the steps actually. Well, well Valerie, uh, it turns out based on this article that was sent to me that most of the stores outside of the one that is in New York City that you you and I are referring to, they're closing, right? Wow. And a lot of what we were trying to do, at least initially, um, which was present the idea of going online, right? Because in the beginning, you and I were doing TV stuff and trying to get on TV. The second right. wave was more like trying to present her as a leader of New York City and working with nonprofits. So I would like to say that I was one of the people that was responsible for trying to push her to be sustainable and in this new era of how business businesses are perceived as socially conscious, hmm. right? Um, and then the next step was being online. So the next, there were like many, many meetings that I took that I was able to get with her. Yeah. And one of the last meetings that I had was not specifically with her, but with her team of people and th there were a lot of younger women that were trying to do the online thing, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get her to be more e-commerce uh, friendly. So now what's happening is that she's lost a lot of money according to this article wow. and her people have not been getting paid, wow. you know, everything. And then she, her, one of her, uh, one of the things that she said in the article was like, I guess I should have, you know, made this move online mm -hmm. sooner. Mm -hmm. right, sooner. So in other words, the people she's been in the in the red for quite a while. And from what the article is saying, it's as if, you know, Barry Diller had been covering it. Her husband had been covering it. Right. But of course, they were presenting it as like she's this big powerhouse and that, you know, she's and she is right. But she hit the skids like everybody else. And she was not prepared for this, just like everybody else. Right. And a lot of the money that they had invested was in uh, brick and mortar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's um, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, um, I haven't uh, I was up uh, more in the um, I guess I guess it's considered the Chelsea area, but it's uh, Sixth Avenue, like between 14th and 23rd Street. And, and there are a lot of um, corporate offices there. And, you know, there are a lot of shops there, you know, right. Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, you know, all these. And I went up there on Friday and, um, wow, the foot traffic is so minimal. It's light, you know? right? It's so light. And when I went into Bed Bath & Beyond, I actually thought it was closed at first because when you go in, usually you're hit by all of these fluorescent lights. Like the store is totally lit up, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and I looked from the outside, you know, um, because you enter kind of into this um, area where you can go either to Bed Bath & Beyond or you could go up the escalator to another shop or down the escalator to another shop. It's like a mini mall in its own way. And, um, and I took a look at Bed Bath & Beyond. It was kind of dark and I'm like, is it open? I don't even know if it's open. And then yeah. I went in and um, there weren't that many people in there. And there, there were, I mean, I know Bed Bath & Beyond is having some issues. I think they're, they claim bankruptcy or something, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's like, I've always gone in there and there's been a lot of people in there, you know, but nobody. And and I was talking to Adrian, and she was telling me that she was talking to her her broker, who's trying to find her another rental. Okay. And he told her that in New York City, that he knew of fourteen to fifteen thousand apartments that are now vacant. Yeah, sure. They're vacant. Sure. People have gone to their country homes. People have decided, you know, I have friends of mine that told me sight unseen, people have gone up to the Catskills and bought places. <laughs> wow, wait till they wake up, wait till they wake up and realize what life's like up there. Uh, and, um, you know, they, kids have run home to their parents' right. place. You know, some of them uh, have gone to, a friend of mine was telling me they've gone to uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. She knows a photographer out there mm -hmm. to live in their parents' third home. Third <laughs> home. <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> Just, 
Right, right, I get it. I understand. Let's go run to our third home, David. Yeah, well. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a shift in the dynamic of it. I just, it's kind of a, a little on the edge, you know, and I just wonder what is going to happen. You know, cities always reinvent themselves when they're, when they're faced with, you know, this kind of monetary strife or whatever, you know, and, and I just wonder where this one is going to go. Because it always seems to recover, you know, recovered from the bankruptcy in the 70s, you know, when everything looked really bleak and <laughs> really dangerous, you know. We'll see. I don't yeah. know. Interesting times, right? It's an interesting time. And, you know, um, you know, this country has an election coming up. Uh -huh. um, and I think all hell is going to break loose on that. Um, but, you know, Trump set the stage for that a few years ago when he started already talking that it's fixed unless he wins. I love that logic. <laughs> it's fixed yeah. unless I win. So then he starts to pollute, you mm -hmm. know, the whole environment and um, by suggesting everything is fraud, everything, everything is fake. Mm -hmm. um, when he is, you know, I guess it makes sense. But um, so it was, uh, you know, it was really sad to, to see your gal, Ruth. Um. <laughs> yeah. that, you guys, don't, don't, like don't throw stones. I'll put 11 on her. <laughs> Not throw stones, but I was more interested in the fact that she had those gloves on than anything else. What about her? What about, oh, well, she probably wasn't wearing her necklace because she only does it at the Supreme Court, but. Well, she had on some frock. Like, it was like a, like a, you know, like a like a like a like a bibby or whatever it was it was you know like 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 the yeah, lace, I know what you're about. like the doily yeah. lacy like my hair is, and then the and the hair was back and stuff and I just thought ooh look at that look at that you hey. know you know Valerie powerhouse powerhouse you know you know Valerie I like you <laughs> you know I like to go to events right I you know, know you. I know I mean we all do. You, if there, if it's gonna be interesting people, I mean, I I want to see what they're up to. I want to see what they're doing. I think that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, my fascination with Diane von Furstenberg was so, you know, strong because she was one of these people that seemed to understand how to present themselves as a larger than life figure, just like Donald Trump, right? I mean, so there's some similarities, even though we don't necessarily, <laughs> some people would not agree, but I would say well, that yeah. there's some I mean, similarities it's... between the two of them. Right. And it's one of the reasons why people were talking about, you know, both of them or either of them. And certain people like Giuliani, they're ones that we can just, you know, run off the top of our tongue, you know? Well, I mean, he's, he's certainly, Trump has certainly, um, he knows how to market himself. Oh my God, yeah. He knows how to market himself, you know. Um, it's unfortunate, he, he, the way that he does it, like his messages are so dangerous, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing a lot of that. Because, you know, there are people who are saying, ah, you can't really listen to what he says. But there are people that do listen to what he says. You know, words are powerful. Mm -hmm. Words are powerful. If they weren't, why have them, you know? Mm -hmm. And um and so he, 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 you know, I never liked him. I haven't, I haven't liked him for 30 years, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, when he got elected, I thought, okay, maybe that was just the show and maybe he's going to do some oh, things God. and I'll change my mind. <laughs> he, just, Valerie, Valerie, he just got worse. <laughs> Valerie, he, the people, remember when we were, at, you know, at the, 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 the auction for the dance company that was being sponsored. Oh, yeah. By oh, wow. And we were oh. sitting... That's right. You know, facing the people that were conducting the auction. Yeah. And when she walked in, I could literally feel her. I knew when she walked in. Yeah. I knew when she walked in. And, 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 and we talked about this before. I applied, you guys don't know, that I applied for The Apprentice um, twice. The first time I applied, I, I, I submitted it through mail. And then someone called me up. And they forgot about that. That's and, right. And then the second time I waited all around, uh, I think Park Avenue, all around the block. And then we, you know, they, they, we, were, we were out there. I mean, I don't even remember how many hours, but by the time we got in, because we were in the lobby 
and Donald Trump came down the escalator stairs. Right. And he had a presence. Sure. And he, very tall, very big. Yeah. Um, walked, and everybody was like, ah, cheering and stuff. And he stopped right in front of us, our little group, because there was a blonde woman who was standing in our little crew of people when we were going in. And he looked directly at her and said, uh, and who are you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, we just lost. We're not even going to make it. We're not even going to make it. We're gonna, we, we already know where he's thinking. You know, we, you we already know. Your hair blonde. <laughs> I was like, come on. Like, but of, of course, Valerie, I was fascinated because I was watching the interaction between Donald Trump and uh, this woman. And she's right. like, oh, like, you know, starry eyed and stuff. And I was like, oh, wow. So although I made it past the first round, right, and I was af very afraid, um, you know, I was very nervous. I said, Dave, do you really want to be on TV like that? You know, and then I was like, I don't think so. So I, I was literally shaking, but that's another story. Um, but, <laughs> but I love the fact that I was there. It wasn't a waste of time. It was not a waste of time. Even no. though I didn't get that, you know, I didn't get that. It was seeing how they put the whole thing together. Seeing how he came down on the escalator, like he, he there, right. you've seen it on TV. <laughs> and he yep. went, oh, waiting. And yeah. so in my mind, I said, okay, when there's an event, a certain type of event, certain things have to be in place, right? So if, in other words, if I were to create an event, Right, I, all of these experiences are experiences that I remember. And I say, okay, if this person's gonna be the you know, CEO, or this person's gonna be the president of the president, you know, when he walks in, certain things have to happen. When, well, it's about, it's about presentation. It's about presentation. You know, presentation. Um, and, and not everybody you know, knows right. about these little things that you, know, you and I have learned over the course of time and I think these are the things that make I mean you've seen it with the weddings when you've seen you know people yeah, with yeah. very very um big budgets let's say <laughs> <laughs> you know and how they want their weddings to 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 unfold which is interesting you know because um Claudia who um is one of the top event planners in New York City I think Claudia you the Wedding, oh, library. wedding library, yeah. Claudia of the wedding library. Now, for a shout out, Claudia, you know you need to hook us up, right? Claudia <laughs> from the wedding library of New York City. So one <laughs> Although of she's kind of, she's kind of like, you know, she's re in the in, kind of in the in the, she's reinventing herself right now. Okay. okay. Um, but, mm -hmm. but she used to have, she used to be affiliated with Martha Stewart, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, she came up with this idea and she ran it, I think, for about ten years, called the wedding party. Mm -hmm. And um, she would have it at, at these really prestigious places, you know, like at Gotham Hall, which was this old bank building. Mm -hmm. So when you walk into Gotham Hall, right. you know, it's like this, this, it, you felt like you, walk, you walked into a cathedral, right. In, right? you know, with a dome ceiling and stuff like that. And, um, and so she was working, she, she basically put it all together and she worked with uh, uh, the woman who was in charge of uh, Martha Stewart's wedding magazines and stuff, I remember, you know. I remember you and, um, and the funny thing always was is that Martha Stewart would usually make an appearance mm -hmm. at this, right? Right. And, um, and the one time that I was there, you know, I had my, my camera with me, you know, I was just taking some photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Martha comes in and Claudia said, she's going, go and get her, go and get her. There's nobody shooting her, go and get her. Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't even like Martha Stewart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Valerie. I don't even like her. So I'm like, okay. did you go? Did you go and get her? Yeah, I went and I got her, you know? <laughs> because I heard you in the back of my head. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> office. And um, but I was like, uh. But she pushes, you know, she's got her grandkid, you know, in mm -hmm. a stroller, pushing it in. Right. And everybody, it's Martha Stewart, and they Oh God, it was like, it was like flies swarming around, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better description, right? Uh -huh. You know, and I'm like, this is just so annoying, you know? <laughs> and, um, 
And uh, I'm like, I don't even know why I'm shooting her, you know? And and she's, you know, everybody that has, the, you know, the vendors that are there, whether it be right. cakes or whatever, they're like, Martha, Martha, you know? I'm like, oh, she's- Bella, just, Bella your, your job is to get the footage so that- I that, got it. That I got the footage. Audio from the wedding library can then use it for however she needs to Wait, use it. She never did, by the way. <laughs> she had a tendency to do that. Go and shoot, but I'm never going to use it. Um, Look, you, know, you never know. Just, you never know. But but my point about it was is yeah. that she walks in, and it doesn't even matter. She was looking okay, you know. I mean, but she uh -huh. has a grandkid in tow, you know, and and so she's walking in like it's like she's shopping on Fifth Avenue, maybe uh -huh. I don't know, you know. But all of these people, the minute she walked in, it's like this stir. Yeah, you, come know, on. you see it, this stir of people. Mm -hmm wanting yep. to impress her and touch her and feel her or whatever they wanted to do, you know? So it's like the same thing, you know? And, yep. and it's, you know, yep. it's these ideals that people have about somebody. Yes. Um, you know? Yes. Um, and they were very good. Cool. You know, they were you know, very I, good at cultivating it. They were very good, all of these people that we talked about. And one of the great things that New York had in, in that day was that there were people who were iconic and there were a lot of them. Right, there were a lot of them, right? Yeah, I a guess so. A lot of them. Right. Like, you know, remember when Mary, what's her name, uh, Astor, uh, the one that was very, like the last of the Astors who passed away? I think oh, right. I remember her, right? She was then in the news all the time. And then her, then her, 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 um, her son was like treating her terribly at the end. Yeah, and was taking right, her that's right. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was in the paper every day, like, you know, and, and everybody in town knew her, everybody in New York City. Yeah, was, and there was, you know. there was Helmsley, remember Helmsley? Yep. So you had yep. these, yep. these big names, you know, because um, New York was a little more of a hub for that. Yeah. Um, you know, now? Mm, I don't know. Not, not so much. Well, they all left. <laughs> <laughs> 15,000 of them packed their <laughs> All the uh, celebrities went to the Hamptons. <laughs> Is that where they're hanging out now? Yeah, that's pretty point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Valerie, I'm not going to keep you any longer, but I want to say to you, um, I wish you the best fall, September, October, because it's already, you know, once it hits August, Labor Day, it's already October. You know how I, I feel know. about that. I right? know. So, I once know. it hits October, it, then it's, it's already December. Yeah, can you believe we made it this far? I mean, I, I look around, it seems like the, the fastest yet the slowest year known to man. <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute, it's gonna be October? How have we survived this? Well, we did. And then at the same time, you know, it just seems like it's, it's kind of dredged on, you know, with all of this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely been an interesting year. I'm not sure creatively how it's going to influence my work. Uh -huh. You know, with some of these projects that I'm supposed to be working on that whether or not they're going to have, I, I don't know, everything's been put off, you know, it, it, it's killed a lot of things this year. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I'm starting to, you know, get that itch, like, let's go already, you know, but uh -huh. we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. But and I um, I'm glad that you have finally decided that you are going to try to work with the month of August being a vacation month for most people. Well, you know, that's, I'm going to work. That's very enlightening. I'm going to make it work for me. <laughs> so it's, it, 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 it will be work, but I'm, you know, I'm planning it so that, you know, uh, and, and also look, look, you know, I've been um, involved with, you know, dance and as you know, and now there seems yeah, I to be the very, I, I was very impressed. Well, there seems to be a new direction moving. I mean, I've been doing that for like, this is the fifth year that I've been involved with, you know. When, I, when I saw that, you know, the one thing that I noticed, especially when I'm watching, you know, dance, is the, you know, fluidity of the hand movement. Uh -huh. And your hands are very fluid. Well, it's almost like it's, almost like it's in your DNA. It is, it is in my DNA, but I will <laughs> say this that the thing that I noticed, and we can talk about this during our next conversation, but I noticed that in flamenco, they, 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 there are some flamenco dancers that are very stiff with regard to certain things like, you know, their hand movement, right? So you'll see this. And what I noticed is that 
because I wasn't used to making the changes, like, you know, you do this and then you do this, that my, sometimes my hand was like this, right, as you can see, which is not mm -hmm. where you want to be. It breaks the line. Right. But I, I felt like I didn't want to be robotic. Like I, part of it, you know, what was going on through my head, it was like, I, I wasn't feeling sort of the way that I could see certain flamenco dancers position their arms. And then after seeing the video, I said, you know what? There's so, Dave, there's so much going on <laughs> that, that you've got to have that. You've got to have that line, right? So my, my, my feet are moving. I'm looking a certain way. There's got to be an angle, right? So the, what I saw from my own viewpoint wasn't necessarily uh, the most accurate, right? So I, I, the next time I go in, like when I go in, I want that arm to be straight, like, like where you can see. You know what I mean? Like this, not like this, not like, you know, this. Now there are other things that you can do to break, you know, to break the line, but usually they're in line with the rhythm and the beat of the music. Like you'll see this a lot, right? But it's usually, it, it usually happens before a change, right? You'll see this before the change of the arms or the movement or, or the direction. So the so, I mean, in other words, I'm still learning how I look on video. Well, I felt, I mean, this is my subjective opinion, of course, you know, um, but I felt that you had great command of what you were doing. Uh -huh. And I also felt that you weren't thinking, you were just being, uh -huh. you know, and I felt that um, like the two, the two clips that I saw, the first one you were doing with one other dancer and then the uh -huh. other one that you sent me was with four. Yeah. Three, and I felt the woman that was on the same plane as you, um, she was in the front, front row with you. I thought she was pretty good too. Like, I think her fluidity seemed to match yours better. And then the two gals in the back row, I felt they were a little stiff in their movements, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I just kind of felt, oh, I, I almost felt like the two of you, that woman and you should do, be doing a dance together. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know who she is, you know, mm -hmm. I don't remember, you know, exactly what she looked like, but I just remember noticing that, yeah. you know, that you two seem to complement each other well, whether or not that's true, I don't know. Yeah. But I felt like you, you know, had a, an assertiveness about you with the way that you were moving, like you, it, you were there, you were in the moment present, mm -hmm. and you, it was just coming from you, you weren't thinking about it, you were just doing it. Well, you know, thank you very much. I, I, I'll say this. And, and I don't want to keep you longer, but um, for whatever reason, I understand how that art form is supposed to work or how it works. So you look at somebody, you know, people would maybe look at me in my background and say, who is this guy? But um, <laughs> I get it. I've gotten that for a long time. Right. So. That was just the. I'm not just saying that that's a warm up. That's a little arrogant to say, but I felt like after seeing that video, I'm like, oh, Dave, you got this, right? Like there are certain things that you were like, even though you said I had command in my mind, I was like, oh my god, like I mean, is it coming across the way I would, you know, the way it's supposed to? And um, when I saw the video, I was like, holy shit! I said, okay, I, the next time, I, I already know how this is going to play out. I already know how it's going to play out because I know what I look like on video now and I'm comfortable with mm. the way that I look on video. Not like a thin policeman in a, in a uniform <laughs> with oversized clothes, right? With the hat barely hanging on his head. I mean, this is everything fit a certain yeah. way. Right. I, said, I said, okay, David, the next time you do this, this is going to be a home run, right? So, when we went into rehearsal, because the, the, this is the first time, I think the woman, there was a, it's a, a man and woman, a husband and woman couple that owned the studio. They were just like, F it, we're going to do this, right? And then they went forth, they was like, who's going to, you know, perform? And, and we just, in the spur of the moment, did it. Yeah. And uh, afterwards, the video started circulating amongst the flamenco community. And, and, oh, wow. And the next rehearsal for the next uh, uh, practice course of the class, it was full. <laughs> wow. It was full. And wow. there are two classes. There's one, the woman teaches, 
and then the husband, the, the wife teaches one, and then the husband teaches another. And the husband was teaching something called Faruka. So what you saw was a traditional men's dance right. with me at the hat. He put that whole thing together, and she did something called, um, oh my God, I should know what the what it is, but she did a different style. So there are all these different styles. Mm. And so now they're teaching us more styles. And the style that she teaches, I can't even remember the names. I, it's just like ballet, I don't remember. I just don't remember the movement. But what he's teaching us is like the quintessential flamenco move that you see when people start, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, they, they, they put their foot up. I wish I could show you, but they like do this and they put their foot up. But there's a, there's a sequence before you hit that beat. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so literally I'm like, Oh my God, he's, he's, he's showing us the mother load. Like he's showing us, he's showing us the real stuff. Like this is the real deal. Like before what you saw, you know, it was a slow moving, you know, movement, except for that one little run. Right. With, 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 with the, with the Faruka from this particular piece of uh, choreography, this particular style of dance, he literally is like, we're, we're, we're off at the gates like horses out of a, um, horses out of the stable or the ho horses out of the, it, it, and the energy, like when he was teaching, you know, you usually we go for an hour. When we got to the end, Bally, he did not want the class to end. <laughs> we were going five after, 10 after, you know, wow. seven. Wow. <laughs> okay, this means that, you know, we're on track, we're on track. So when we have that next show, yeah. That next show is going to be a big one because I'm curious to see, you know, this, uh, this, there's a guy, um, there's a guy that sings. There are all these musicians that are there from Spain. Some live in Vintitor, some live in um, uh, Vintitor is about like half hour, 45 minutes um, away from Zurich, very close. Uh, and then there's some from Zurich. Right. And the guy that does percussion. You know, he saw me when I performed in Basel because he was the per percussion guy. But then he was like, yeah, you know, Dave ain't doing it. You know, he ain't doing nothing, right? So after the class, I would say, hey, you know, what's going on? And we would leave. And it sort of, eventually, he was just like, eh. So after the video, when I saw him, like, last week, he was like, hey! <laughs> hey! Right? Wow. So, so the video... Really bringing people, you know, they're enthused. Circulate, yeah. And then, then I was in class and this woman, before we got started, she comes up to me and she says, look, and she says this in, in Swiss German. She's like, look, I saw the video with you and Leah. That was the girl, you know, with the hat. She said, like, oh, you know, you really were this, that, and whatever. Mega, they say mega all the time. Mega, you <laughs> mega fine, mega this, and mega... And I was like, okay, thank you. So now, in other words, Valerie, long story, is that I'm more prepared than ever, right? Whereas before when you and I met and I was sort of explaining to you what I do, it was sort of like piecemeal, right? Like, yeah. I kind of do this, Valerie, or I'm trying to do this, but yeah. it was not fu fully envisioned, right? It was right. not, yeah. and the confidence wasn't there. Sometimes it takes time, you know? You have you know, to walk through, uh, through a lot of uh, forests before you, you know, kind of well, put it all together, you know what well, I mean? Well, especially, you, especially if you have a lot of interests. Well, yeah. I think also, I think it was just fear across the board, fear well, and anxiety. Too. Yeah, that right? too. Sure, sure. Fear and anxiety, because I still have a lot of interests, it's just that I don't care what people think anymore. <laughs> you know? well, that's 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 the age thing too, where you get to a point like, oh come okay. on, you know. I mean, I you, you you really just are about moving forward, you know. Yeah, Straight you have ahead. to. Straight you ahead. Have to. You, you have know, to. Taking all the tools, all the things that you, you know, gathered um, from behind, yeah, you know, experience. bring the stuff that's going to help you and and move forward. With it. Well, I, I will say this, and then we talk about this later next time. But it was sort of like method acting. Mm -hmm. That performance was like method acting because mm -hmm. I walked out and I was like, Dave, you really just got to do it. Like, you know, you got to become that person. Right. right. So I was still sort of like, ah, until the very end when we hit that, that boom, right? And we started going in a circle. Um, 
then I was like, okay, we're home free. We're home free. So then I could kind of jazz it up a little bit, like, ah, you know, do the little hips. And um, Next time I watch you, I'm going to just remember all these sound effects. <laughs> yeah, like I do the little hips. Oh, I got this. <laughs> but, I, but I had to, to maintain, get through the whole thing. But now I can at least go in a, le a little bit more, even into character. Whereas before I was like, okay, I'm walking, but I'm walking like, all right, serious, but I'm not going to be like, you know, um, how you say, I, I'm not going to be hound dog in it or, you know, I, I didn't want to be overly, right, but I know now where I can do that, right? I know based on what I saw on the video, I'm like, okay, Dave, you can, you can ham it up a little bit there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Giving yourself the freedom. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, can, you can go in a little bit harder there, right? You don't have to. You know, you don't have to be like, you know, I, I, that's the one thing I didn't want to come across like, oh, like I want to, you didn't. <laughs> you know, I want to be able to, to look authentic. You right? did. I thought you did, you know. Well, it, 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 it made an impression. So we yeah. will see what happens. They've offered, they've said anytime that we want to come and practice on our own, we're, a, you know, we're more than welcome. Fabulous. And without, and without you know, cost, they just, we just have to call them up. That's nice. I like that idea. It's gonna it's gonna go really. How about this? I have I I foresee that the flamenco thing is gonna go big very quickly. It's gonna go very quick. I can already tell. I can already tell based on the choreography that they are now presenting. I'm like, oh my god, this is the real deal. Like <laughs> this this wow. is the real deal. They are serious. Now I did send them videos. It's a beautiful dance form, so it'd be really interesting to see. Yeah, I you sent know. them videos of Rebecca, my niece, and I sent them oh, videos wow. of what we did here in Switzerland, so that they could get an idea of, hey, look, whatever you throw out, I, I'll, I'll do. Wow. Whatever how's your you, niece doing? How's, hmm? uh, how's your niece doing? She's doing very well. Um, she has some interest. I, I, you know, I, I'll tell you off. Uh, off camera mm -hmm. that who's been interested in her like some major 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 um, wow. company has reached out to her yeah. um, but because of the situation of COVID or whatever I mean who knows how it's going to unfold I know but they at least reached out to her and they offered her two things wow well wow, that's fabulous. what I'll tell you offline because if I tell if I tell it now I'm you know first of all I don't know if I have permission to tell it and if I, even if I do have permission to tell it, it may mess up whatever plans that they karma. already have in terms of- The karma. <laughs> being able to share that information with the public, but I, I'll share it. Anyway. I, love, I love this. I, you know, we'll talk about that, that sweet little kick-ass drummer too. Yeah. Um, Bushnell, Bushell, Bushell was her name. Yeah, she's just, a, wow, yeah. she's this, she's just this bright light, you know? Mm -hmm. Not only can she play, but she's this beautiful, bright light. She's got this bouncy personality. You know, she is full on a force. Well, <laughs> if you see the video, she's challenging Dave, uh, uh, Dave Grohl. I saw that. Yeah, she yeah, saw yeah. that. And he's looking kind of weak compared to her. <laughs> she's, got her, she's got her chops together, you know. I'm like, he's okay. looking like he is struggling, like compared to what she's doing. He's like, <laughs> he's playing like this. <laughs> And she's like, <laughs> you know, he's struggling. I'm like, I thought he was supposed to be the best, right? What's going yeah. on? She's like doing, I challenge you. <laughs> I like I like her spunkiness. I'm like, well, there you very are. Good. All right. Very, very good. And I tagged you on that. So you'll see that. Look, I'm going to let you go. Valerie, we've been talking for like an uh, hour and a half. Thank you so much. Uh, it's as if I'm there in New York and we're doing it. I know. Music. I wish you would be. Well, I don't really wish you would be now, but I wish you would be at some point. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, always, it's always fun catching up with you over there. Yeah. The yeah. We, the we do chop world. it up. We chop it up quite a bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> More exciting things to come. Yes, there, there will be. I, I, can, I can tell you, it's, I can feel it more than ever so this idea of you saying it's going to be a big burst of creativity and like you're right on point because so many people have been you know uh, sequestered and mm, quarantined and yeah. you know uh, unable to express themselves yeah and so if we finally yeah. get the go ahead it is going to be tremendous 
Yeah, it will be. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these optimistic realists, you know, um, usually kind of seeing the gravity of situations, but always being hopeful about things, you know, yeah. so that's the way All I right. am now. You know, got always, Good. always got to look at the good. You got to move ahead, right? Always yes. forward, right? You have to, right? Keep well, moving. Right. Mr. Uh, France, <laughs> love you, my friend. Yes, uh, have a great um, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> as well, and enjoy. Uh, and right. uh, I will catch up with you. You will. All right, or at least, and then I'll, and then I'll talk to you briefly. But I'm going to end it. I'm going to tell you the stuff that I can't tell you on air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. See you later. Ciao, ciao.